Hello, I'm Pastor Greg of Calvary Reformed Church, and we're finishing up our series on the Book of Ruth. It's been a wonderful series. If you've watched all the videos, I, I trust you've learned as much as I've learned. If you have not, I encourage you to, to go back and, and, and look at, at the first four videos we watched. Today we're going to finish the Book of Ruth, Ruth chapter 4, and it's going to talk about legacy. Legacy. Just to catch you up on what's going on, Boaz has says he will be the kinsman redeemer. He will buy Naomi's land. Plus, he will take Ruth on as his wife. At this point, verse 11 says, The elders of those at the gate said, We are witnesses to Boaz, saying he will take the land. He will be the redeemer. May the Lord make the woman, Ruth, who is coming into your home, be like Rachel and Leah, who together built up the house of Israel. May you have standing in Ephrathah and be famous in Bethlehem. Ephrathah means fruitfulness. Bethlehem means house of bread. Neither one of those towns at this point yet or areas were fruitful or house of bread. But with Boaz, a man of God, Boaz means strength. Bethlehem's trajectory was shifting and changing. We know down the line, the Messiah is born in Bethlehem. And may the offspring that Lord gives you by the young woman, by Ruth, may your family be like that Perez that was born to Tamar and Judah. Judah, one of the twelve sons of Isaac. Judah's first two sons were married to Tamar, a foreigner. First two sons died. Judah refused to do the, the kinsman redeemer with his third son for Tamar. Tamar tricks her father-in-law into having sex. They have a son named Perez. Perez comes in the line, the lineage of the Messiah. So beautiful. So Boaz takes Ruth, and she became his wife. And he went into her, and the Lord enabled her to conceive, and she gave birth to a son. And the woman said to Naomi, Praise the Lord, who this day has not left you without a kinsman redeemer. May he become famous throughout all Israel. It's interesting that within these verses, they're, they're saying to, to Naomi, to Ruth, to Boaz, may you become famous, may you have fortune, may you have fame. And that's really how the Lord blessed them there. While we go on here, for your daughter-in-law, Ruth, who loves you, is better to you than seven sons. And given birth to a son named Obed. Obed, meaning servant, servant of God. Obed, who is the father of Jesse, who becomes the father of David. The lineage. Lineage. Legacy. Within these four verses, the very end, or three verses, the very end of Ruth chapter 4, there's about 850 years from Perez to David. And the legacy of David starts way back when. The legacy of, of our life doesn't start right now, but has a history. You may be wondering why I'm here in front of Bethany Reformed Church. While the Reformed Church in America came to America in the mid-1600s. In 1850, First Reformed Church was constructed downtown Kalamazoo. 1942, there were a group of people that were worshiping together in the Texas Corners area. They came to Bethany Reformed Church and said, let's, let's be part of the Reformed Church. And they started what was called Bethany Mission. And from 1942 until 1954, Bethany Mission served the Texas Corners area on the, the corner of 6th and RS. 1954, the people there at Bethany Mission said, we want to organize as a church. And it became Calvary Reformed Church. First Reform of Portage helped them. Faith Reform of Portage had a chapel that got moved out to Crooked Lake Drive and for 25 years served as the facility of worship for Calvary Reformed Church. 1982, they decided they needed to move. Hello, 1982, they needed to move over to 5th Street. They had bought seven to eight acres of land. They constructed where we worship now. 1995, they added on, Calvary added on the educational wings and made sanctuary bigger. The legacy of Calvary. But you see, it doesn't really start with just us. It doesn't really just start with the starting of, of Calvary in 1954 as an organized church or in 1942 as Bethany Missions. It doesn't just start when the Reformed Church came into to Kalamazoo. 
It starts way back when with Jesus Christ, when he gave his life for the church. And it starts in the Old Testament, when, when the Old Testament is pointing to the Messiah, the legacy, our legacy, is from way back when. But as, as we look at this, this morning, today, the legacy of Ruth and Boaz, I'm wondering what your legacy is. What do you want your legacy to be? What do you want people to say about you? Great worker, great man, great woman, great cook, raised wonderful kids, all those are important. Friends, I think there's a lot more within our life that we're called to do than simply live those aspects out within our life. You see, the, the, the first part of the end here of, of, of Ruth chapter 4 points us to the reality that God uses unlikely people for his purpose. The son of Tamar and Judah, hmm, born out of incest, comes in the line of the Messiah, the legacy. Rahab, Rahab, who ran a boarding house, we say a brothel in Jericho, saved by the two Jewish spies as she saved them, comes in the line of the Messiah. Ruth, a Moabitess, a foreigner. Ha, Tamar is a foreigner. Rahab is a foreigner. Ruth is a foreigner. Comes in the line, has a child with Boaz, Obed, meaning servant of God. Obed is the father of Jesse, who is the father of King David. And we know that David is told that his, on his throne, a child would sit forever for eternity. And we know that is Jesus Christ, the legacy. Friends, God will use the unlikely person to fulfill his purpose. I don't know about you, but at times I feel like I'm the unlikely person. And I grew up stuttering really bad. I grew up with um, being tongue-tied. I still, people in church will like to correct my verbiage, my words, because I can slaughter words so easily. I still get tongue-tied. I still stutter. And yet, God desired to use me, and I pray He still desires to use me, for His purpose. See, God has a purpose in your life. God desires to use you. But when we sit back and say, you know what, I'm useless to God, that's not going to work. God wants to use you, friends, for His purpose. Imagine if Ruth would have said, I am just a poor, destitute woman. I'm a widow. I'm a foreigner. I got no purpose. God had a purpose for her. A second point I just want to bring up is that, that decisions matter. Decisions matter. Naomi and her husband, 10 years prior, made the decision to leave Bethlehem because of a drought. Naomi's husband died in Moab. Naomi's two sons married two Moab women. Both of her sons died. On the way back to Israel, the way back to Bethlehem, when Naomi heard there was now the famine was over, the one daughter-in-law turns around. Ruth made the decision to follow her mother-in-law by saying those wonderful words, where you go, I will go. Your God will be God, my God. Your people will be my people. The decision of Ruth. Ruth made the decision to go out and gleam in Boaz's field. Boaz made the decision to lift Ruth up. Ruth made the decision to say, Boaz, will you marry me? In the cover of darkness, on the threshing floor. Boaz made the decision, yes, I will marry you, I will redeem you. I will buy back Naomi's land, I will take you as my wife. Friends, decisions matter. You may think that your decisions don't matter. You may think that your decisions don't matter. You might, my camera almost fell over. You may think that your decisions don't matter. You may think that, that what you do does not have an impact. And yet, friends, what we do, our decisions have an impact. It's that ripple. It's the stone that goes in the water and those waves go out. Our decisions matter. Make your decisions on the Word of God. Make your choices on the Word of God, what God's Word has to say in our life. And the last point I want to bring out is we're called to leave a legacy. Leave a legacy. Bethlehem did not have a legacy at this point, or really a good legacy. 
I mean, if you read the book of Judges, Bethlehem and the tribe of Benjamin, they're having problems. They were almost wiped out by the other 11 tribes because of sin in the area and sin that they did. But God still used the unlikely person of Ruth and Boaz to change the trajectory to change Bethlehem and to be in that lineage of the Messiah. The lineage of the Messiah. Micah 5, 2 to 4 says, Bethlehem, though you are small among the clans, though a ruler will come from you who will shepherd all the people. The lineage of, of Boaz and Ruth goes to David, goes to Solomon, goes to Mary and Joseph. Mary, a young teenage girl who becomes pregnant by the Holy Spirit. Joseph, who is told, take Mary as your wife, though she is pregnant already. They had to make the decision. And that decision walked within their legacy. And that legacy is the birth of the Messiah, Jesus Christ, our Savior, my Savior, your Savior. The legacy. Friends, my question is, what, what are you going to be remembered for? What is going to be your legacy? Know that God is gracious and he desires to give you a legacy of serving him. But we have to make those decisions to serve him. And how do we find ourselves on this journey? How do we find ourselves walking with the Lord? Joshua said, as, as he took over the leadership after Moses died, as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. My question for you, for me, is what do I want my legacy to be? My prayer is that my legacy will be people who say he was a man who strived to serve God, who had the DNA of Jesus Christ, who pointed others to Jesus Christ and called others into a relationship, an eternal relationship. Friends, you see, all around us, one day is going to be gone. And yet that relationship we have with Jesus Christ is what is eternal. If you know who Jesus Christ is, I celebrate that fact because we are brothers and sisters together. And if you do not, I encourage you to accept Christ into your life today to change your eternal address and walk with him. And may your legacy be a legacy of faith. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord, any this morning or today that have not accepted you, Lord, I'd ask it. Lord, that they could simply pray, Lord, Jesus, come into my heart. Be my savior, be my guide, be my, be my master, be my coach. I give my life to you. Amen. If you prayed that prayer with me, I encourage you to, to get in touch with me or get in touch with a local pastor so that you can grow in your faith and grow in your, your legacy in your life. Family of God, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he lift up his grace upon you. May he grant you grace and peace. Amen. Again, if, you, if this is your first video, I encourage you to watch the first four videos. And may the Lord bless you in your growth of producing the legacy in your life as God uses unlikely people who make decisions for Him, leaving a legacy of faith. Amen.